We want love vegan! Hi, I'm Lee Chantel from VivaLaVegan.net and welcome to this latest video with Inspiring Vegans. Today I have Jeremy Johnson from Vegan Perfection. How are you, Jeremy? I'm very well. How are you, Lee Chantel? Good. Very good. And tell me, what's Vegan Perfection? Uh, vegan Perfection is uh, an import and wholesale business. We import the best vegan food products from all around the world and we distribute them all around Australia to health food shops, vegan shops, cruelty free shops, organic shops, any shop that would like to sell good quality, cruelty free products. And when you say the best products, give me some examples. Uh, we do Redwoods Cheesley, we also mm -hmm. do uh, Cheaton and Veggie Deli meat replacement products, mm -hmm. we do Vigusto Swiss cheeses. Uh, they're very popular have, at the moment. They're very, very mm. popular, very, very tasty. Uh, we have a huge range of chocolates, we import tons of chocolate. Um, everybody likes chocolate, particularly organic cruelty free chocolate. Yes, Booyah Booyah. Booyah Booyah yes. is very popular. Yes, I like uh, that one. Camel, uh, Bon mm -hmm. Vita, mm -hmm. various other brands. Yeah, that's very good. And Easter's just coming up. Mm -hmm. Are you getting a lot more chocolate this year? Have We've you noticed? sold several thousand um, cruelty free organic fair trade Easter eggs this year. Whoa, that's a lot. Demand's very high for dairy free, cruelty free fair trade and organic use products. There seems to be a lot more on the market, doesn't there? Yeah. So where do you think the best products come from? Vegan perfection. Vegan perfection. But joking. other than from, <laughs> where do you source them from? Uh, we get our products from the UK and all over Europe. So you would say the UK has the best sort of products? Not or? necessarily, but uh, they have products that I think fit with us best. Mm -hmm. um, there are products, good products springing up all around the world. Um, but the UK is where I became vegan, it's where I became more aware of vegan food products. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was a natural fit for me to import products from the UK because mm -hmm. I had a link with the UK and I already knew the products. I knew the products that I liked a lot and mm -hmm. other people would like. So that's how you started the business, wasn't that's it? That's right, yeah, it was okay. for selfish reasons that I started. <laughs> I just tried to import um, boxes of food for myself because mm -hmm. I was despairing at the lack of vegan food in Australia. Well, how long have you been going for? Uh, over eight years. Well, yeah, eight years ago there wasn't much, was there? No, it was hopeless back yeah. then. Um, just nothing at all, really. So, uh, all of the suppliers that I contacted uh, said that they couldn't send me a box of stock, but they could send me a pallet of stock. Mm. And um, then a light bulb went off. And mm -hmm. It all went from there. And that's good sometimes, just to start something where it doesn't exist, and that wasn't even your plan, but it's led you to this road. Absolutely. Do you regret any of it? Every minute. <laughs> no, I don't regret any of it. It's been extremely hard work, and mm. uh, for anybody that sort of thinks it's the sort of thing that you can do at the drop of a hat and do on a part-time basis, it's definitely not. Mm. Uh, it can be very stressful at times and extremely demanding, but uh, there's no way I would regret it. Not when it's promoting cruelty-free lifestyle, mm. helping people to become vegan, helping people to stay vegan. Yeah. Um, that was the main aim mm. of the of establishing the business was to introduce products to make it easier for vegans to remain vegan and easier for people that were thinking about becoming vegan to mm. be vegan. And with all the um, products that you have, 200 products you mm -hmm. have, uh, makes it very easy, doesn't it? It does, yeah. And um, our company motto is pure indulgence for healthy living. Mm -hmm. And our, our belief is that um, life is about abundance, mm -hmm. not about denial, and particularly vegan lifestyle. Um, despite all the cliches that you hear from mainstream society about uh, our lifestyle being one about denial, um, the complete opposite is true, mm. as I'm sure you're aware. Um, you discover a whole world of, um, of foods out there when you become vegan that mm. you never knew about when you were just a carnivore. Yeah. Um, and particularly bougie bougie organic French champagne truffles. It's Amazing. Indulgent, um, indulgent chocolate that mm. would be that has won several awards, um, not just for vegan chocolate or dairy-free chocolate, but for worldwide. Mm, um, and that's also partly our motto is that product can't just be vegan for us mm. to want to sell it. It has to be high quality, indulgent product that people will want to eat. So um, setting up the business 10 years ago, is there anything that you would have done differently? Uh, a few things, yes. Mm -hmm. um, that you'd like to share? Mm, trade secrets. Uh, <laughs> um, well, our first shipment actually got destroyed in transit when oh, we no. lost the entire amount of stock. I trusted someone that I shouldn't have trusted with the freight um, and that almost 
put an end to us before we started. Mm. Um, that was a fairly traumatic start, but out of uh, out of difficult things, good things can come. So definitely, um, it probably made my resolve all the stronger mm. to carry on. But apart from that, um, nothing really that I would want to have done differently. Mm. And if someone is starting out, wants to start out their own business, are there a couple of tips that you could give someone a um, vegan business? Well, first of all, you have to believe in what you're doing completely, 100% wholeheartedly. Uh, and you also have to be prepared for a lot of work. Um, even though it's something that you enjoy and you believe in completely, there'll be times where you, you just want to walk away from it and you want to not think about it and you want to rest, but generally um, you can't afford to do that. Mm. Uh, without, it's hard to have your own business, business going isn't backwards. it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so even though it's a vegan business and you love it because it is a vegan business and mm -hmm. a cruelty free business and for what it promotes mm -hmm. um, at the end of the day it's still a business and it mm -hmm. still has to be financially viable yeah. and everything that's involved in a non-vegan business is still involved in a vegan business mm. and i think sometimes a lot of people i've seen in the past and even at the moment now they they want to have a vegan business whether it's a restaurant or an online store or something mm -hmm. like that and many of the things in between yeah. And a lot of them seem to forget that you need to be sustainable, you need to actually be making money. Correct. And you know, it's great that so many people want to do something positive and want to promote veganism, mm -hmm. but how do we get people to think about the money aspect or the reality aspect of things? Um, I honestly don't know if I, mm. if I had the answer, I wish I would bottle it and, <laughs> and sell it. Um, um, there are commercial realities in every business and people have to see that when they go into business um, just because they're selling an ethical product because they're selling a cruelty free product or an organic product or a fair trade product doesn't mean that their business is automatically going to succeed it doesn't mean that people are automatically going to patronize their business um, and unless you have a thorough plan a financial plan a business plan a strategic plan um, the chances are that you're planning for failure. So, mm. um, planning, we, we planned our business, setting up our business for about eight, nine months no before way. we even imported any product. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was doing legwork around to try and garner what interest there was in the market, mm. um, trying to get enough capital together to mm -hmm. start a business, uh, trying to get a financial plan together that would allow the business to grow and maintain its cash flow. Mm -hmm. All fundamentals of a sound financial business, mm. um, but things that a lot of people, surprisingly a large number of people don't consider when they start Definitely. a business. Definitely. I get a lot of emails for people to share, um, for me to share um, some of those crowdfunding things mm -hmm. for people all the time. So there's mm -hmm. a lot of people that want to start up businesses. Yeah but don't have that capital behind them yeah. and you know you have to think about the first year or the first Absolutely. two years in yeah. particular if you are hiring space or renting space Absolutely. electricity power paying your staff mm -hmm. they may they might not even make a wage for a few years how yeah. will they support if they have a family how will they pay the mortgage or the rent Absolutely. all these things that maybe people don't think of absolutely yeah they're all, all critical things that if uh, someone doesn't think about them, six months down the track they'll get a very nasty shop mm. when, as you say, they can't afford to pay themselves yeah. because they have to pay their staff or because they have to pay a six month lease or they mm -hmm. have to pay an electricity bill. Um, and the number one is absolutely, if you don't have sufficient startup capital, mm -hmm. your cash flow will dry up. Yeah. Uh, particularly if your business grows, mm. your cash flow will dry up and suddenly you won't have any way to pay anybody mm. and your business stalls and in a lot of cases just disappears altogether. Yeah. So we need some good money at the beginning and we need um, some good structure and planning beforehand. Sound financial management. And financial management, that's mm -hmm. good. And yeah, good luck with people that want to go with a vegan business. I very much encourage people to uh, open their own vegan business, start their own vegan business. And it's been fantastic in the last eight years to see a proliferation of vegan mm. businesses. It's um, really um, the one of the best things I've seen in Australia is the, the number of people that are getting out there and doing their own thing, promoting a cruelty free lifestyle. Mm -hmm. um, but for people that are going to do it, always consider the financial aspect of it mm -hmm. because uh, as much as we like to think that money doesn't make the world go around, 
there are commercial realities uh, that you have to meet and commercial obligations that you have to meet um, and the more financially successful vegan businesses are the more it promotes veganism mm. uh, the more the mainstream will take notice of veganism and say well there must be something to this mm. so jeremy why vegan um i just can't tolerate animal cruelty mm -hmm. um, i became vegan because i read a book uh, by jeffrey masson called the peak who sang to the moon mm -hmm. um, and i became vegetarian overnight basically from reading that book yep. um, and then it was a very quick and easy transition to veganism within probably one or two months of that mm -hmm. um, and basically um, I don't know if you know the details of the book but it, I can't it, remember. it, it details the horrors of factory farming mm -hmm. worldwide um, and what we do to factory farm animals mm -hmm. um, and um, I would challenge anybody to read that book mm -hmm. and not be at least deeply affected as a minimum mm -hmm. and as a maximum basically to turn vegan the same way as I did. Cool. And how long have you been vegan for? Uh, I don't know. Um, I would say <laughs> 9.33 years. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> and so tell me, you, you import a lot of stuff from the UK, Europe, mm -hmm. and um, you live in Australia mostly when you're mm -hmm. not overseas. What are the, some of your favourite places to eat at? Uh, favorite place to eat at uh, anywhere that I don't have to cook is a good place. Mm -hmm. um, I do love to cook, but I generally find I don't have a lot of time to do it. Mm. Um, but at the same time, I don't get a lot of time to eat out, so I'm not fond of information for places to eat. <laughs> uh, but Veggie Bar in Melbourne is one of my favourites. Um, the good. food's always reliable, but the vibe is great and it's always mm. packed. Um, and there's a place in Collingwood called Shoe Restaurant. Mm, that's, not, that's not a purely vegetarian or vegan restaurant, mm. but they do Vegan Wednesday oh, cool. banquet. Um, and very different, very inventive. Mm -hmm. And they're becoming more and more veganized. And I think the more people go there, the more that they'll move towards vegan. Yeah, I've heard it happen. Yep. Um, they'd be the two best that I've been to. Mm -hmm. What about in the UK or Europe? In the UK, there's a restaurant called Saf, which mm. is a Turkish restaurant. Uh, Saf is a Turkish word for pure, and oh, cool. their food is amazing. I've been hanging out to go there when I go to the UK, just from that favourite video documentary of mine making the connection. Mm -hmm. So yeah, That's one day right. I'll yeah, go Saf there. Saf is featured in that, yeah. Yep. And um, they do, still to this day, the most incredible vegan cheese I've ever tasted. Wow. Fantastic. Europe? All raw. Oh, great. Mm. Anywhere in Europe? Uh, I'm not looking for coffee. Mm, can't think of. There's, a, there's an organic raw vegan restaurant in Prague. Mm -hmm. I can't remember the name of it, but that is apparently incredible. Good. And so, um, most all your stuff's organic? Not all. Not all? No. It's so, probably about 70% of what we do is organic. So, what's so great about organic? Well, organic is just taking the whole vegan thing to the next step, basically. Mm -hmm. um, when you're considering pesticides, chemicals, and obviously insects and everything else that are affected by pesticides and chemicals mm -hmm. that are used in conventional farming and conventional cropping. Um, so, um, organic, in, in a purest sense, organic is an extension of a vegan philosophy mm -hmm. where no harm is done to any animal um, and therefore, obviously, organic farming is all done in harmony with nature and done in harmony with or the insect bugs and everything else that conventional cropping seeks to exterminate through the use of chemicals. Mm -hmm. Cool. And what's your favourite product that you sell? Oh, that's difficult. Uh, it's either the Gusto Mildly Aromatic Cheese mm -hmm. or the Plamel Organic Egg Free Mayonnaise. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a tough choice between those two, but I can't go past those two. Mm -hmm. Well, next time you see Jeremy or see any of his products like the Vigusto Cheese, mm -hmm. the Plamel um, Mayonnaise or Chocolate, Brigibuyo Chocolate, um, Cheesely, mm -hmm. anything else that Jeremy you know, imports, <laughs> Make sure you um, think about um, the great work he's been doing the past 10 years to get all of those products in our stores in Australia. Thanks for dropping by and chatting with us, Jeremy. My pleasure. And see vivalavegan.net for more information and interviews with inspiring vegans. Thanks for having me. No problem. Ciao. <laughs>